car sped down the nearly deserted road, the sleek black vehicle cutting through the night as the newlywed sat in silence. The dashboard soft light cast a faint glow on your faces, highlighting your unease. The air inside was thick with awkwardness, the kind which sat us between two strangers. And indeed, you both were two strangers th- thrust into a marriage over a promise. A promise made between your late grandparents. An arranged marriage. Sounds like an outdated concept, but it was the reality of you and Jimin. A bond that was tied by your families rather than by your hearts. You had only met him a few times before the wedding, during some form of meetings or engagements. As much as you had observed him till now, you knew he was a man of few words. He seemed distant, as though observing you behind the glass wall. You wondered if he struggled to express himself. However, he was cordial and polite, a gentleman or precisely a man returned by woman. But there were all kinds of thoughts plaguing your mind, negative overpowering the positive ones. What if he weren't the person you thought he was? What if he turned out to be someone you loathed with all your heart? What if your equation with him turned out to be toxic? A sick feeling settled in the pit of your stomach as though your negative thoughts showed their effects on your body. A dull act loomed in your head as a sudden wave of nausea surged within. You felt the knot bursting in your stomach which refused to loosen up, instead tightening with every passing moment. At that fleeting moment, you didn't know where to focus. To the ache in your head, the tightness in your chest, the nauseating feeling which seemed to intensify every moment or the quietness sprawling in the air like smoke, making it difficult for you to breathe. From your peripheral vision, you observed him silently, his face illuminated under the moonlight, adding to his charm. His entire focus was on the road ahead, but his discomfort was evident by the way his grip was tightening on the steering wheel. You blew out a sigh and squirmed in discomfort. The soft silk material of your wedding gown rustled against the leather sheet. You looked out to the passing city to distract yourself from the sick feeling in your stomach. Are you okay? His voice pierced with a thick silence, startling you out of your trance. You looked at him, meeting his eyes, and gave him a small smile. Yeah, I'm fine. It was a straight lie because you were anything but fine. The dull act in your head had intensified double folds. It felt like it was being hit by a hammer. Your eyelids felt heavy and the nausea didn't seem to fade any moment. There was heaviness in your stomach. You pressed your palm on your abdomen trying to quell the uneasiness. You thought it was because of the day's exertion or maybe because of the whirlwind of emotions churning inside you. As he drove on, each mile closer to his house, which was supposed to be your shared home from now on, the feeling worsened. A cold sweat broke out along your hairline and you swallowed against the bile that threatened to rise. Jimin seemed to notice your uneasiness as he asked again, this time his head turning to meet your eyes. Are you sure you are fine? His voice surprisingly soft. For the first time during the night, you saw concern flashing in his eyes, and something shifted inside you seeing the man you barely knew caring for you. I am. You lied again, your voice strained due to exertion. Jimin didn't look convinced at all, but he didn't pester you further. He didn't intend to make you uncomfortable. He just stayed at you for a moment longer and turned his attention back to the road ahead. You stayed out of the window, rewarding your focus on the passing scenery. But the nausea surged, making it difficult for you to sit silently. You twisted your hands at your sides, trying to fight through the feeling. Your knuckles turned white due to how hard you twisted your hands, to the point where your nails dug into your palm. But how long you could keep up with this, until it became too much to endure? Stop. You spoke. Abruptly, startling him, you breathe coming in short, desperate pants as you fought to contain the pile that had ridden up to your throat. What? Please stop the car. You managed to utter, your voice desperate. The urgency in your tone made him react instantly. The car sped gently to the side of the road, brakes squealing softly before they came to a halt. 
You fumble with the door handle, struggling to open it. You let out a frustrated groan as I decided to test your patience. Jimin gaped at you with wide eyes as you barely managed to throw the door open and stumbled outside, tripping on your long wedding dress. The cold night air hit you like a slap. You managed to take two steps away from the car before you collapsed on the grassy ground, retching violently. Everything you had eaten throughout the evening, the tiny bits of food, your wedding cake, a few sips of water, came up in a heaving wave. The muscles in your abdomen contracted painfully as you discarded all of it on the ground. Your throat burned and tears stung your vision. It felt like your stomach had shrunk into a flaccid sack as its content flew out all the way through your mouth. Mortified, you closed your eyes, trembling and gasping for breath. This was not how the night was supposed to go. You were supposed to be a charming bride, not a sick soul, retching in the middle of nowhere. You head lowered in shame as you felt his presence behind you before you felt him kneeling beside you. His large hand rested on your back, rubbing soothing circles. It's alright, breathe. His soft voice reached your ears, a steadying presence in the chaos of your sickness. Take your time. You shook your head, too humiliated to look up at him. I am sorry, you managed to whisper through your short gasp. Tears rolled down your cheeks as you felt the weight of the situation pressing heavy on your shoulders. It sh He interrupted in between, his hand never leaving your back. Don't worry about it. His voice worked as a soothing balm of your bones. His calmness, his unexpected kindness, made something tighten in your chest. He was supposed to see you like this, a sick, crying bride. Nor did you expect him to care so much. But here he was, beside you, kneeling in the dirt, providing comfort to his soothing touch. At that moment, all your earlier negative thoughts faded in the thin air, leaving behind a strong sense of belief that maybe he wasn't the person you chose for yourself, but he was the best for you. After what felt like an eternity, the nausea ebbed, leaving you trembling and weak. Your abdomen felt strained. Though your head no longer throbbed like before, the dull act was still there. As you tried to get up, you sagged forward, exhausted. But before you could crumple onto the ground like scattered pieces of shattered glass, Jimin's arms were around you, holding you close. Easy, I've got you, he whispered pulling you closer. You felt his body warmth against your side. Your head lulled on his shoulder, completely drained out. You didn't have the strength to protest as he lifted you to your feet. His hand slid on your waist, holding your body weight as he ushered you back to his car. You half expected him to deposit you in the passenger seat and turned away as soon as you were settled in, but instead he reached into the back seat and pulled out a bottle of water and a small cloth. With surprising tenderness, he wet the cloth and wipe your mouth with it. You just stared at him with half lidded eyes, taken aback by his care and concern. A sense of warmth, the kind of slow and constant flow, surged into your heart. Was it supposed to feel so special and overwhelming? Seeing your husband whom you knew nothing about, caring more than your family ever did, was it supposed to make you feel out of the world? Here, drink some water. Take slow sips. It, it will help. He offered you some water, holding the bottle steady against your lips as you obliged him and took slow sips. When you finally managed to take a few deep breaths without feeling like the world was spinning, he slowly lifted your gaze to his face. There was no disgust in his gaze, no irritation, only concern and something else, something you couldn't quite decipher. I am sorry, you whispered again, hating how fragile your voice had become. You despised to show, show your vulnerable side to other people, but here you were, all sick and weak in front of your husband of few hours. Stop apologizing, he said firmly, though his voice was calm and without a hint of anger. You are not feeling well, it happens, okay? You thought maybe he said it to make you feel better, 
he was probably disgusted but he was uh, showing it so that you wouldn't feel bad but his tone had no pity no sense of obligation just raw sincerity and genuine concern you blink silently surprised by his compassion and sense of understanding but we this isn't your voice broke unable to articulate your thoughts properly you had lot to say and nothing to speak at the same time this is how our first night together was supposed to go is that what you want to say he finished for you his lips quivering up in a faint wry smile he nodded miserably tears welling up again you didn't know why you were so affected by something you had no control over but it was what it was maybe you were over stimulated by the day's events and now everything felt overwhelming he sighed softly and he started to brush a stray lock of hair away from your clam clammy forehead his hands cradled your cheeks in his palms providing you the warmth you needed at that moment his thumb wiped away the tear before it could completely leave your eye we have got a like what lifetime to figure these things out right he murmured brushing his thumbs at the underside of your eyes tonight let's get you home and make sure you are all right yeah you stared at him speechless out of all possibilities this was not even the last you imagined him to react like you had heard from your parents that he was a kind and understanding man but never imagined him to be so humble his kind words the tender brush of his fingers and his concerned eyes made your heart swell with a feeling you couldn't name okay you whispered nodding your head he nodded leaning closer to fasten your seat belt as proximity made you breathe hitch in your throat his cologne reached your nostrils leaving you breathless all over again he smelled good refreshing and comforting here cover yourself he draped his suit jacket around your shoulders his eyes focused on his task while your gaze was stuck at him refusing to look away comfortable he asked breaking your train of thought you blinked slowly and reluctantly tore your gaze away from his face you nodded clutching the jacket tightly in your palms igniting the car engine jamal started driving this time he drove slower glancing at you time and again he hesitated but then grabbed your hand the warmth of his palm engulfed your hand as a soft blanket on chilly winter nights and as the car continued down the empty road the silence between you no longer felt quite so heavy the car rolled to a stop in front of a sprawling mansion the soft hum of the engine fading into the quiet night you blinked groggily still feeling weak and dizzy your eyes darted to the vast house looming before you it was a mansion you had often watched on television straight out of a dream and now the thought of it being your home which you were going to share with your husband seemed like a fantasy coming to life it wasn't that your parents weren't capable enough to afford a big house like the one before you it was just that they were too attached to the small house you had born and brought up in it was a house built by your grandparents where you all used to live together happily but unfortunately your grandparents passed away when you were a small kid and your parents decided to continue staying there as it made them feel at home let me help you out his voice flinched you back to reality you blinked in confusion finding him standing at your side his hand was outstretched for you to grab maybe you were too lost to notice him getting out of the car and opening your side of door you gave him a small smile and unbuckled your seat belt neatly folded his jacket and held it in one hand as you placed your other hand over his outstretched one thank you you whispered as he helped you out of the car he tumbled due to the lingering dizziness your legs unsteady as you leaned on to him careful he mumbled as he acted upon his instincts and held you you felt the solid warmth of his chest against your side his strength reassuring you in a way you hadn't expected he took his time to make sure you were steady before guiding you slowly up stone steps to the front door the porch was dimly lit and the house appeared beautiful but intimidating structure from close it was elegant in its, its simplicity you stood silent as jemin walked through the keys unlocking the front door 
वेलकम होम ही स्माइल एट यू वॉकिंग बैक टू होल्ड यू बाई योर वेस्ट यो हार्ट रेस्ट एट इज वर्ड्स होम वर इज वर्ड्स ओनली कन्फाइंड टू दूज मैंशन और समथिंग मोर देन दैट यू हैड ऑलवेज हर्ड दैट इट टेक्स अ मोमेंट टू चेंज समर्स लाइफ एंड नाउ यू हैड विटनेस इट योर सेल्फ इट टू के डे टू चेंज योर लाइफ फॉर गुड मे बी योर सन नेम चेंज योर होम चेंज एंड मैनी मोर चेंजेस अवेटेड अहेड बट इफ द चेंजेस वर बिकॉज ऑफ अ मैन लाइक जेमिन यू वुड इन माइंड मे बी यू वुड बट अ लिटल लेसर The massive wooden door led you into a wide foyer filled with elegant furnishings and soft muted colors. As intimidating as the house appeared from outside, it was as warm and lively from inside. In a normal situation, I would love to give you a house tour, but for now you need to rest. He said leading you towards the stairs, his hand on your back guiding your movements. We can do this now too. I'm fine. I mean better now. Keep your side eye and heave a huge sigh. You and I both know that you are in fine and coming to the house too. It's yours now. You can explore it yourself once you get better, ye. Yeah? He said leaving no room for argument. Let's head to our bedroom. He ushered you towards the stairs and helped you climb them. Despite your dress being a hurdle, you may slowly and carefully head you up the stairs until you reach the master bedroom at the end of the hallway. Here, sit down. He murmured, guiding you to the edge of the large bed. You sighed gratefully, letting your tired body sink on the soft mattress beneath. Stay still. I'll be right back. He said gently before disappearing into the adjoining bathroom. You heard the sound of water running and the rustling of a fabric. A moment later, he returned with a warm, damp cloth and a small basin. Kneeling beside you, he gently dabbed at your face, wiping away the lingering traces of sweat and tears. The cloth was cool and soothing against your flushed skin, and despite your embarrassment, you found yourself closing your eyes, relax, relaxing into his touch. You don't have to do this. You murmured, your voice barely more than a whisper. I know. He replied simply, his fingers moving with careful precision. But I want to. You swallowed the lump that formed in your throat. Your eyes never left his face as he wiped your face with utter tenderness, followed by your hands. You breathed cold in your throat when he reached down to your feet. Lifting off your dress, he gently removed your heels, now wiping your feet with a towel. It wasn't supposed to affect you so much, right? Was it? Once he had finished, he set the cloth aside and glanced at your heavy attire. This looks uncomfortable. I think you should change. You nodded desperate to get out the out of the itching fabric and slip into some comfortable night clothes. Could you bring me my na- night gown? It's in the blue luggage. Jimmy's lips stretched in a smile as he disappeared inside the closet and returned with a coat and night gown and his own clothes to change. You can change here. I'll change in the bathroom. You nodded and watched him disappear in the bathroom as you. As the door clicked shut, you hastily eased out of the heavy dress and put on the night gown, grateful for the comfort of simple fabric. By the time you were done, Jimin stepped out, wearing a white sweatshirt and black sweatpants. He walked over to you, pulled back the covers and tucked you in, his movements slow and deliberate. The sheets were cold and soft against your bare arms. You shivered slightly as he pulled them up to your chin. There, comfortable? He asked his voice a soothing rumble. You nodded weakly, watching him through heavy-lidded eyes as he straightened. He hesitated for a moment, looking down at you, and then seemed to come to a decision. Try to get some sleep, he said and made his way to the door. Your face fell when you watched him walking away. You thought he'd stay with you, or precisely, you wanted him to stay by your side. He sighed softly and looked away. He halted in his tracks and walked back at you, watching confused and as he leaned down to your face level and cupped your cheek. Don't worry, I'll be right back. With that, he pressed his lips to your forehead. Your heart skipped a beat, eyes instinctively shut close, pulling back, still at you for a moment longer before stepping out of the room. The door clicked shut behind him and he blinked up at the ceiling, processing everything that had happened. 
slight brush of his lips still lingered on your forehead, making your heart beat erat erratically. Till now the nausea had faded, leaving behind on exhaustion and a strange, fragile feeling in your chest. Your eyes drooped due to exhaustion, but you tried your best to not sleep. You wanted to wait for him. Jim stood in the kitchen, his phone in his hands as he dialed his mother's number. He was worried for you, and he didn't know who to turn up at the late hour. After contemplating for long, he decided to call his mother. Hello, Jamin. What happened? Everything alright? Is Wayne okay? His mother shot him with questions as soon as she picked up the call. Mom, mom, relax. Yeah, everything is alright, but Wayne is not fine. She is sick and I don't know how to make her feel better. What happened to her? She was fine till you both left. Did you do something? Jimin rolled his eyes when his mother directly accused him without hearing the whole thing. It was given that his mother had a different kind of likeness towards you. Mom, I didn't do anything. We were coming home and she threw up on the way. She is sick. You couldn't hide the concern in his tone. His mother sighed from the other side. Make her a cup of tea with ginger and honey. She'll feel better. Jimin's eyes leapt up and he nodded, agreeing to the idea. Okay, mom, but how do I make it? He said, roaming around the kitchen to collect the essentials. You know that, Jimin, stop playing with me. I know, but just guide me. I'm hella nervous and you know I mess things up when I'm nervous. I don't want to worsen her health with a terrible tea, he said as he filled a small pot with water and set it on the burner. His mother guided him through the process of brewing tea. And stay with her, don't leave her alone. Of course, where will I go leaving her? He mumbled, straining the tea in a cup. Okay, mom, I'll call you later. Okay, call me if you need anything. And take care of her. Waiting her goodbye, he hung up, he made his way towards the room, carrying the freshly brewed tea. As he stepped inside, he noticed you struggling to keep your eyes open. He walked towards the bed steaming cup of tea in his hands. Try this, he murmured, carefully helping you sit up. The bed dipped slightly as he sat beside you, one up supporting your back. You took the cup in both hands, the warmth radiating through your chilled skin. Small sips, it should help settle your stomach. You obeyed, sipping slowly. The tea was sweet and fragrant, the ginger sharp but oddly comforting. Soothe your throat, and for the first time that night, you felt a measure of relief. Thank you, you whispered, glancing up at him. He met your gaze, his eyes dark and unreadable in the dim light. For a long moment, you just looked at each other, something unspoken passing between you both. You don't have to thank me, just rest, I'll stay here. You blinked in surprise. You don't have to... I want to, he interrupted gently, his lips working in a faint smile. I promise to take care of you, didn't I? There was something almost teasing in his tone, but the sincerity in his eyes made your chest tighten. You nodded slowly, setting the cup aside with a trembling hand. He helped you lie back down, then pulled up a chair beside the bed. But as you watched him, your eyes, eyelids heavy with exertion, Something in you rebelled against the idea of him sitting there all night, watching you like a sentinel. Lie down with me, I'm cold, you whispered before you could stop yourself. He stiffened, surprise flashing across his face. For a moment, you thought he might refuse, but then slowly, he nodded. Alright, he climbed into the bed beside you, careful to keep his distance. You turned towards him, your body curling instinctively seeking out the warmth of his presence. The sheets rushed softly as it shifted and then tentatively he wrapped an arm around you pulling you close. The sensation of being held or being cradled against his chest was startlingly comforting. You could feel the steady rise and fall of his breathing, the solid beat of, beat of his heart beneath your ear. Better, he whispered. You nodded too tired to speak, his finger burst lightly against your arm, soothing and steady. Sleep, I've got you. And as you drifted off, the last thing you felt was the press of his lips, a feather light touch against your hair, and the warmth of his body coiled protectively around yours. 
well arranged marriages aren't that bad if one gets a partner like jamen caring loving who is not afraid to show his emotions and who doesn't carry around a mountain big ego after all the right partner changes your life for good